Hi all you beautiful people. Today I am making a cheese, a hard cheese, pressed cheese, which is really quite a journey. So I'm going to see if I can make a film <laughs> doing it. And all this milk is just sitting there souring. It's about 16 litres of fresh milk, milk from yesterday and milk from today. It's from Ivy, the black cow who calved six months ago and she's just having what we have, the herbs and the, the pasture and she's making this very creamy, very lovely milk. So what I'm going to make is something I've never done before. <laughs> Got my cheese book here. It's a manchego. So it says here this cheese originated in Spain near the plains of just get my glasses. Um, Toledo and was made from the milk of Manchego sheep. It has a rich mellow taste and is available in four stages of ripeness. Manchego fresco is aged for five days or fewer. Manchego curado is aged for three to twelve weeks. Manchego viejo or something is aged for three to twelve months. And Manchego es Siete is aged in olive oil for more than a year. In Latin America today, manchego is made almost entirely from cow's milk. So I think this is very fascinating. Um, and what I love about this, it's, um, it's a hard cheese. And it's got, as you can see here, it's got the mesophilic and also the thermophilic starter. So it's going to have a very a very special taste and this is of course a raw cheese so it's got all the bacteria from us from our place it's you're supposed to uh, add this lipase powder but because it's raw you don't need it because the lipase enzyme is in the in the milk so it's going to rest here for an hour and then I'm going to add the rennet which is one teaspoon for about this amount of milk and it's going to sit there uh, for 30 minutes before I cut the cubes. So what I'm, I'm doing here is just simply we can just check this is my new thing out. <laughs> See so I'm just gonna put some hot water in there because I want it to be 30. You don't want to cool the milk. So let's just keep this up a bit. So, I'm no professional and this is not a sterile kitchen in any way, but uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> okay, so let's just check this. It's been sitting for an hour. And we want to add the rennet. I've got a bit of water here. Some people say you have to be very precise, but I don't like being too precise. <laughs> but it really is best to be very precise. So here I have my water and I'll get my rennet. <clears throat> and I mean rennet, it, this is from a good company in Denmark. I got some that was really cheap and it just didn't work, which was really irritating because I was making cheddar. So irritating. So it says, calls for a teaspoon, so this is one and a, qu one and a quarter milliliter, so about four of these, teaspo these spoons. But yeah, I'll, I'll put a little bit less, I don't want to have too much. Oh, let's just give it. The, the amount of rennet does really affect the taste. So, I have made che hard cheeses before, and it's a type of Danish cheese called Havati. And the only ones that really worked out well, that was when I did everything wrong. <laughs> so, 
It's so funny. And what I should do is check, check the, the temperature. Let's see what the temperature is like. It's perfect. It's 30. So in goes the rennet. And because this is very creamy milk, it's a good idea to top stir it. Just keep stirring. You stir for about a minute, stir it really well. And then you top stir because. Uh, the cream does rise very quickly, especially with Jersey milk. It's, this is a Jersey Dexter mixture, and her milk, her cream does rise pretty quickly. So, and now that I'm making, I really want a full cream cheese, especially this Manchego or Manchego, which is supposed to be made of of sheep's milk. We did have sheep for milking uh, for some years, but it was it just didn't work because it was a very, very, um, not a very strong animal and you had to feed them very, very nutrient rich food. They just weren't, I just love the, the natural animals that can live off whatever's growing. So this is much better and I just love cows. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help it. There's a hair there. I got it. You can really see the, the cream rising. Oh, wait, there's another one there. Alright, that's irritating. Where is my little... Ah. Oh. Let's hope it goes into the way. There it is. Let's see if I can get it. Where is it? It's gone. All disappeared. I think something's happening now. I just love this. I just love... Oh looking after the animals and knowing that they're happy and and this food that's coming from the land I just love this I've always loved this it's so special not having to go to the shops to get this but that it comes straight from the the, the earth the water comes from our well all comes from the, our beautiful earth and although it's so polluted to our world just don't think about it just <laughs> Just, yeah, just uh, see the world as completely pure, and it will be.
I've, I've just made so much more other things. The, the, these cheeses is just not my big thing. But now that I have so much milk, it's really wonderful to to maybe have some lovely cheeses for the winter. And it's fascinating. I mean, the whole the whole thing of cheese making is just. I've got this really wonderful book I'm reading about the whole culture of cheese making and how it's been all over the world. People have been making cheese and it was to make it keep. To make the milk keep. Uh, for the, the times when they had no, nothing to eat. And then all these amazing tastes have developed. Blackbirds are still singing, <clears throat> but it's it's not as much. They sing so much in springtime. And, I mean, you just don't know, the rennet can, can vary quite a lot, so you have you can't just go by the clock. It's supposed to sit for half an hour, but if the rennet is, not a, little, is a little bit weak, uh, or I've just put a little bit too, not enough rennet, it's going to take longer than half an hour, so we're going to see when there's a clean break, we can cut it. It's really important to wait. It just looks like this is taking some time. Patience is something you train. <laughs> you really train. It's good to be patient. I need it. I need to learn more. There we go. Here it comes. See? It's changing now. You can sort of make lines in it now. See? Here we go. Now let it rest. Half an hour. We'll get back. So it's been exactly half an hour since I actually put it in and you can see it's a beautiful clean break. Lovely clean break. And what they say is to cut the curd into half inch cubes. So that's what we're going to do. at all. And this is going to set for five minutes. Um, and then we're going to make them, make them much smaller. So I'm just 
just wait five minutes. So now starts the um, real patience training because now what I have to do is stir this for 30 minutes with this whisk just slowly because what we want is pea-sized curds and I've checked the outside it's 30 degrees Celsius so that's perfect so it's good to check the clock or write down it's 10 past 10 now in the morning and 20 to 11 this is done song in. It's such a lovely warm morning. Real, real beautiful summer morning. Yeah, um, actually I'll be stirring this for 30 minutes slowly. And then for 45 minutes after that I'm going to heat the curds to 40 degrees from 30 degrees. So for um, two degrees every five minutes. So that's good to It's a good, uh, I could sit on a chair just by the table here. I think I'll do that. just go into a relaxation mode just relax and send the send the cheese lots of love good energy So when you're doing this, of course, you have to be very gentle in the beginning because you don't want to lose uh, the fats into the whey and that's what happens if you're too vigorous, which I often am, <laughs> especially with heating, it's so hard for me to control that. But if you are, you do, it does really affect the taste of the cheese. And you can lose a lot of fat into the whey, which is just a pity. Because not only do I want a, a very creamy cheese that's very healthy, very good for me, because, yeah, it's just the full fat products are just the best. But also because the taste is always the best when you have a lot of cream in there. Although there are some cheeses where you remove the fat, so like Parmesan is actually a, a quite a low fat cheese and that has lots of taste. So it's not always, it just, yeah, it's not always true. There's a cheese maker, an Australian man, who has the website called Curd Nerd. A lovely man who has I mean so many videos you can go and see more or less every cheese I think how to make it isn't it wonderful how we're sharing all this all these experiences and all this knowledge that I mean I got from someone else I didn't know this 
from books and it's just really fun to watch it on a film. Very different to a book. This is looking good. So when I'm going to make a cheese, the day before I put all my stuff, my cheese mould, my cheese cloth, everything into this pot and put the lid on and boil it all in there or steam it all in there. So it's all sterilised. I mean, so you've got a lot of the bacteria gone. But there is always bacteria in a kitchen like this. So you just can't avoid it, but um, it is really a good idea to get to boil this. So something's happening, so I'll just keep going and get back to you. So it's been now uh, eight minutes and I can sense how I can be a little bit more vigorous now because they're sort of going a little bit more tough, the curds, and we want them to be chopped up. So I'm just being a little bit more rough now. And the, the way is lovely and clear still. So I think the initial closing off of the curds has, has happened pretty well. Let's keep going. So now it's been, it's been half an hour and I got this wonderful thermometer just a few weeks ago and it's already not working. So that's really wonderful. <laughs> so I hope this one is going to do the job for me because it's so important. This, this next part is so important because you want it to, to go up, the temperature to rise, two degrees every five minutes. So it's looking really good, I reckon. I can use this now. So what I'm going to do is simply put very, very hot water into the sink. It's about 60, maybe 70 degrees. And this one's working, I can see. That's good. It's 31. Or maybe less. It's supposed to be 30. And now... I want to get it up to 32. have lots of water when you're making cheese. But I mean, what did people do in old times? They didn't have much water and they just made these beautiful cheeses anyway. good to use your hands because you can feel the heat.
and you can also break up these the ones that that cut together. Let's just see how this how quickly this heats. Just tell my husband about this thing that's broken. Maybe he can do something. more hot water into here. And as soon as it's, it's come up, I just, I just let out the water I think. Because it's, it's supposed to be on 32 now. So I can just quickly let out the water so it doesn't overheat. Let's see if this is good. Something's happening, I can see. Yeah, it's on 32 now. So I'll just let out the water. Bit of a waste, but... Uh... And then in five minutes time I'll do the same thing. I think that that's going to be the smartest way to do this. And then I can also just have a little break. Have my coffee. <laughs> so we'll get back in five minutes. Okay, so this is the last time. And I had to use this thermometer because the, the smart one I had bought was broken. So now we want to get it up to 40 degrees Celsius. That's the, that's the last, that's the temperature we end off with. And this was actually a really great way to do it. I've never done it like, like this before and I'm going to do this... Uh, the next time because it's so smart. But when you have so much milk, uh, it doesn't cool down very quickly. It will keep the temperature. So I simply heat, heat it up doing this and then I just put the lid up. Uh, I empty the, the sink. It's so smart. So these ones are really not good either, apparently. So it's it's um, it's good to have something that's good quality that you don't have to keep throwing out because or get your money back. It's just so stupid all this uh, using all this stuff. Waste. It's too wasteful.
It did actually fall a bit, I can see. It did drop a bit, the temperature. But now we're going to do this. And you can see how small they are. They are really rice size. Oh, nearly rice size. heating beautifully also this this pot is a very um, is not thick it is a very light pot so the heat goes through very quickly and you don't have to lift it up and down I love that because if I used a heater like a stove I'd have to lift it round it's so heavy So it's nearly there. There you go. Perfect. So Leave it for five minutes. Oops. Leave it for five minutes. We're gonna, we're gonna take the whey off. So I'm just getting this uh, cheese press ready that my husband made for me the other day. It's just a very simple method. Because we're going to press with 7 kilos and then 15 kilos for this cheese. This is just a uh, pasta pot. And this is an old piece of a plastic bucket. So, cheese is going to go up into that. All set. Okay, so the cheese has been resting for five minutes after I did all the stirring, and now we're going to scoop it up from the pot here. And into the into the mold. Just get the camera out here so we can see something. You can also pour some of the whey off, but I'm just doing it this way. I love about this cheese is it's you've already got lots of whey out of it, uh, so it, it becomes firm very easily.
So that's pretty good. The chickens can have the rest. Okay, so just press it down with my hand a bit here. I can put the put the cloth on and just press a bit like that. Put this plastic on. The so-called follow well. And this just sits on here so it so that it just doesn't slip when you put the, the weight on, which is really smart. Only it could have been a little bit <laughs> a little bit longer. Those sticks. Uh, those uh, yeah these. But it's uh, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is simply put this pot on here because I want seven kilos. And I'll just scoop up. This is about two kilos, so I'll just take five five liters. I'll just seven kilos and it's going to sit there for a quarter of an hour and then we're going to turn it so okay so a quarter of an hour has gone by and we're going to do this two more times so my sister a special thing about this cheese I think you're using the same pressure the same weight three times so here we are looking beautiful I love how it really quickly becomes a cheese looks like a cheese <laughs> Now it's a good idea to get the cloth as, as uh, flat as possible because it does make it a bit of end product. You don't get too many creases in the cheese. There's a hair there. Okay, and we fold this cloth over as uh, straight as we can. Put this on again. Okay, so I'm going to do that one more time. I won't show that because I'm just going to do the same thing. And then we're going to put a bigger pressure on. So we'll get back then. Okay, so now it's had this pressure on twice. Take it off. It's 
So you can see that it gets some little creases from the material from this cloth, but it's no big deal. It's looking really good. Looking really, really good. Okay. So this is the last time, and it's going to have the double pressure. That double pressure. down. You sort of fold, let me show you this, you just, uh, you just fold one side, one side of the cloth down and just make it as straight as you can. Put this on. should be tall enough because it's not going to be pressed down very much. So what I do is I simply use the, I just use the pot because it's about 15 kilos. It's just important that this doesn't Oops, wait a sec. There we go. This has to be loose so that it's not being held back by anything. Okay, so, and it's sitting there in the middle very nicely. And here I've got the big pot, which was, and it just is uh, actually the right size. So just pour this in. And that gives us 15 kilos. we go. So it's going to sit here for six to eight hours, so till tonight. See you then. So now about seven hours have passed. We can take this off now. So here we have the beautiful cheese, and we'll just take it in to give it give it uh, the salt. We're going to salt it now. Okay, so I just weighed the cheese, and it weighs 2.2 kilos, and we want about 2% uh, salt. And we're using the Himalaya salt because it has no iodine, as I've explained before. We want a salt without iodine, and the Himalaya salt is from, the, I mean, millions of years ago. It's pushed into the into the ground, so it's it's a ground salt or a mine salt. It doesn't have the iodine in, in it anymore. So this is looking really, really good. So it's it's lovely when you make a cheese like this. Uh, you have all the way. It's I mean, there's hardly any moisture in this cheese, and it just makes the drying uh, process really quick. So I love that because I used to make Havarti cheeses, which is a Danish type of cheese, and there's so much water, so much whey in them. So here we go. Let's salt it. And you actually. Um, the traditional way to do this is to put it into a brine solution, but I read that um, 
the New England uh, cheese making site, uh, the lady who wrote about this cheese here, there, she said that she uses this method and I think this works really well for me too. It just, uh, it saves you making the brine and it protects the cheese really well while it's drying. Just, just put it onto this so it can just sit there soaking it up for a little while. And then we're going to put it in a cool, dry place. It's a bit hard to find in the summertime, but I, I put it by a window where it's it's quite it's a north faced room we have. I'll just leave this here for a... Oh no, I'll, I'll, I'll take it into that room now. And so here is Ivy's cheese, the Manchego. And this is the next morning. There's still some salt on there. So I'm going to... Just turn it. So I have this under because uh, quite a bit drips off. So I just I just shift this because it's dry in one end. It's sort of a bit long. That seems to do the job. And so turn it round. And yeah, I could also just take it off that. I think I'll just take it off this. Learning as we go, because this it does sort of make the cheese bend. This is this is more this is more straight. So turn it around like that. There we go. And let it just dry here in the cool air. This is towards the north so it's nice and cool here all night and if it gets warm during the day I have this cloth and I just make it wet, sort of wring it out and put it on top so it sort of keeps the cheese cool. So looking good.